We're going to look at one of the most amazing stories in the Bible. It's one of my favorite stories, and it comes from 1 Kings chapter 18. Now, I don't know what the most amazing event you've ever seen is. I was thinking about that this week. What's the most amazing thing I've ever seen? And I think among the most amazing things I've ever seen were the birth of my children, because it was pretty amazing to see my children come into the world. But it was also kind of weird, because when, I don't know if you know this, but when kids are born, they are, they're purple, and they look like aliens, and they're kind of gooey. So that was kind of weird, but it was also amazing. It was also amazing, also beautiful and amazing and weird. Uh, but this is not a weird story. This is just an amazing story. First Kings 18, we meet Elijah the prophet. And Elijah was raised up by God in order to draw God's people back to God. Because in 1 Kings 18, I don't have time to go through the whole story, but you can talk about it in your small group. In your small group, I hope someone's going to summarize the story and kind of talk about it in a little bit of detail. But in 1 Kings 18, it was kind of a bad time in Israel's history. They weren't honoring God. You see, the Israelites at that point, they were really religious meaning they would go to church on the Sabbath, on Saturdays when they went to church, but they didn't really honor God with their life. They didn't really follow God. They would do some things that God told them to do, but for most of the time, they would follow other gods named Baal or Asherah. And so Elijah came to kind of wake the people up and to get their attention. And he did that by performing a lot of miracles through the power of God. And in 1 Kings 18, he does just that. You see, what he does is he stages what I like to call a God contest. And and he does that because he wants the people to understand that even though the people of Israel were far from God, God was still at work trying to draw them back to himself. See, God is always trying to do that. Maybe you're at a point in your life where you feel really disconnected from God, where you don't really... You don't, you don't really feel like you have much of a relationship with God. Understand, God is always trying to, uh, to work to show you His grace. He's trying to help you. In every moment of your life, He's trying to help you. That's what the Bible means when it talks about grace. And He tried to do that. God was doing that in this story. You see, what Elijah did was he, he gathered the people of Israel, and he, and he said, I want you to get together the prophets, the priests of Baal, and some of these other prophets of these false gods, and they got together on this mountaintop, Mount Carmel, and Elijah said, we're going to set up two altars. And so that's what they do. And, and first he says, what I want you to do is I want you to take a bull, cut it up, it's kind of a gross story, sorry if you're vegetarian, but he said, cut up the bull and throw it onto an altar, and then we're each going to do that, and we're going to pray, and we're going to say, we're going to pray to our gods, and whoever brings fire from heaven, they're the real God. And so first Elijah tells the, the prophets of Baal to go ahead and pray, and so they start praying out to their God, praying out to Baal that he would bring fire from heaven, but an hour goes by, two hours, three hours, four hours go by, nothing happens. And Elijah, he's like, what's up with your God? Is he, is he watching TV? Is he going to the bathroom? Like, what, why is, what, where's the fire from heaven? He starts just kind of making fun of their God. And nothing happens. They start cutting themselves, trying to get their God to respond. Nothing happens. So finally, Elijah's like, okay, my turn. I'll go. And Elijah, he, he puts the bull up on the altar. He pours water on the altar to make things a little more difficult for himself. And he prays. And God brings fire from heaven, and and the the fire consumes the whole altar, and God shows that He's the true God, the God of Israel, the God of the whole world. And the people respond, and they, they kind of recommit themselves to God on that day. And you and I, we can pull an important lesson from this, and that's that this story teaches, teaches us a lot about honoring God. It, it teaches us that honoring God is a choice that's going to affect every part of our lives. As God reveals Himself, as God shows how He's trying to bring us into a relationship with Himself, He's doing that, and, and one, of the way, one of the reasons He's doing that is so that we would choose to honor Him, and that we would have all of our lives, that every part of our life would honor Him. See, what happens is, whether you're a student, whether you're an adult, whether you're a kid, we tend to have we tend to give lip service to God. We, we tend to give what I like to call partial obedience to God, where we say, yeah, I'm a Christian, and maybe you go to church on Sunday, maybe you go to youth group, but there's a lot of areas of your life where you don't honor God, whether it's the, the things you say when you're not at church with your friends or things you look at online or things you do. There's areas of our lives, or maybe it's just your thought life, that is, is disobedient to God, And that's what I call partial obedience. In Jesus himself, and the Bible makes very clear that partial obedience is really disobedience. 
that we can't say that we really honor God with our lives fully if there's areas of our lives that are disobedient to God. And so what God wants us to do is He wants us to, to recognize the areas where we, we struggle with obeying God and admit those to Him. And we're going to talk about that in your small group. But the other thing, or one of the other things I take away from this story is that honoring God is a choice. It's a choice to honor God. That you have to make that decision for yourself. You don't automatically honor, your, honor God because you were born into a Christian family. See, the Israelites, they thought, oh, well, we honor God because we're Israelites. Moses was our ancestor, and Noah, and Abraham, and maybe you know who those people are, maybe you don't, but they were important people in the Old Testament. And the Israelites kind of thought, well, yeah, we're all okay with God. We honor God because we're Israelites. But see, honoring God's a choice. You're not automatically a Christian just because you're born into a Christian home. You have to make a decision to put your faith in Jesus, to trust in Him for the forgiveness of your sins. And then as a Christian, you have to make a decision to honor God with your life. And so as a student, now is, now is the best time in your life to make a decision, make the choice to honor God. See, God leaves it up to us. He allows us to make a decision. Maybe it's that, that first decision, that decision of, of faith, that decision to trust in Jesus. Maybe you're at the point where you're still trying to figure out who God is, and the decision for you is to recognize that Jesus is your Savior. Jesus is the one who came to this earth to die on the cross for your sins so that you might be forgiven and, and have eternal life. And the decision, the choice you need to make is to put your faith in Jesus. And if you already are a Christian, perhaps and probably I'd say for pretty much all of you if you're a Christian, the choice you need to make is to honor God with every part of your lives. Now we're going to struggle, we're going to fall short, we're not always going to honor God perfectly, but our desire as Christians should be to live lives that are honoring to God, especially when, like in 1 Kings 18, we see God for who He really is. We see God in all His power and His glory as He brings fire from heaven. You think about all the things that God's done in the Bible, all the miraculous stories, maybe the things that God's done in your own life that reveal who He is and what He's like and why He deserves our honor. My hope is as you reflect on those things and as you see those things, you'll recognize that honoring God, it's a choice, but it's a choice that you should make as a Christian and that it should affect every area of your life.